time agreed um good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, or good afternoon from whichever part of the world you are joining us in from uh, my name is ambrose tashobia um, i am um, the honorary president of the federation of ghana basketball association but most importantly maybe for this purpose of this meeting i am the president of the council for youth basketball and three on three in africa I'm also the uh, vice chairman uh, of the committee for uh, three on three at FIBA World. But most importantly, I'm a lover and a very, very good friend of the game three on three basketball. Uh, we are glad to have you this evening. Welcome to all of you. Uh, this is Africa Talks. And today we are talking three on three. Today we are talking about uh, three on three in face of the new challenges of COVID-19. Uh, the world has changed. We still have the game that we love. And to be able to cope, we need to find ways and new strategies uh, to help us through this period. Uh, mm -hmm. Today, uh, our topic is going to be um, what best strategies can we adopt um, for the development of three-on-three -three in Africa in relation to the times that we are in. Um, so today we will have a debate and it's going to be uh, joined in by very distinguished members uh, of the three-on-three -three family. We have among uh, the many, Madame Rehab, uh, she's uh, the head of the three-on-three -three commission of the Egypt Basketball Federation. We have Mr. Adrian Popper, is the communications manager of uh, Sports Arena Streetball. We have Nicholas Nato um, uh, He's one of the speakers. He's the director, technical director for FUBA Federation of Uganda Basketball Associations. And we have, last but not least, uh, on the speakers today, we have Robert uh, Rabina from uh, FIBA 3x3. Uh, he's the development manager at FIBA World. Uh, also today, and uh, who is the guy holding the back end of this uh, is Mr. Mustafa uh, Sar. Uh, Mr. Mustafa has been the man that has been engineering much of this, and we've been collaborating well to make sure that this happens. Uh, and uh, he's been very instrumental in hosting a number of such uh, events in different um, with different topics uh, in Africa, especially in Senegal. But I want to recognize uh, in the background some of the very very distinguished members of our Africa, FIBA Africa fraternity. Um, there is a, a name that you'll see that resonates with African basketball. Dr. Alphonse Billy has joined us in the meeting, but he's only listening in because of the many things that he's doing at the same time and we are happy to have him listening. So Africa Talks uh, Basketball, Africa Talks 3 on 3. 3 on 3 in basketball, I mean in Africa has come um, quite a long way, uh, but still uh, it has so many things that need to be done. The history of 3 on 3 um, uh, uh, as a sport, it started way back um, in 2010 at the, at, at the Singapore Youth Olympic Games. And since then, many countries have come on board. Over 150 federations have participated in international competitions such as 3 on 3 World Cup, zone competitions, and games uh, organized by the, Olymp the Olympic committees and, uh, African Ga and the All Africa Games uh, for us in Africa. Um, we have uh, different categories of three on three, as you're all aware. We have the under 18, the under 23, and we have the open category. And uh, three on three, uh, if we are to say uh, the list, it has been one of the most successful sports that we can have, looking at the short history that it has had in a, a formal setting, to being able, as we speak now, be on the schedule of Tokyo 2020 which was supposed to be this year, but then uh, because of the COVID-19 will be next year. I uh, hope we're all aware that the Olympics, uh, Olympic Games were postponed, but those are no mean achievements um, for a sport. 
to come on board. We must see our sister sports, the likes of those who are around uh, the British ca uh, colonies, the likes of uh, netball that have struggled and failed to become Olympic sports after very, very many years of existence. So thanks to the many people that have been working tirelessly hard, um, uh, Mr. Alex Sanchez, who heads the entire department together uh, with his manager, Robert, and the entire team have done a great job but um, most importantly, the different federations that have actually decided that they need to take three on three to the next level. So today uh, we will want to see how we can keep this momentum, how we can also pick up pace as Africa being the head of three on three uh, council in Africa. I know that there's a lot that needs to be done. Uh, I was also the head of the federation of, in Uganda and we managed to achieve a number uh, you know, of big milestones, but a lot needs to be done. So sometimes in face of such challenges, there can be a little bit of uh, a stepping back and thinking that all hope is lost. But from me to you, I think this is an opportunity for us as um, five on five for sure is going to struggle in many African countries because of the logistical uh, requirements for it. I think this is the best time for us as uh, the three on three family to push the three on three is used by all our countries uh, to kickstart uh, basketball in Africa after this, during and after this COVID uh, time. So, but that is not for me, for uh, myself to determine or decide. Uh, we have all these uh, gallant members who are very experienced. We want to share the experiences, some of them are technical. We want to hear from them what they're able to advise us to do. And uh, without um, uh, wasting uh, our more, much more of your time, I am going to, first of all, invite all of them one by one to um, introduce themselves, do justice to their second name. I'm sure I didn't say their second name really well, especially Robert. So they will be able to pronounce their second name quite well. And then they will tell you what they do. And we we'll see, we we'll share experiences and stories about what is happening and also get advice and encouragement on how we can take three on three forward. So starting uh, this evening is the lady in their house, Madame Rehab. If you can please unmute yourself and then tell us more about yourself in two minutes, introduce yourself. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, hope everybody is safe. Uh, and I'm very happy to be with you all and being a part of this conference and join this great team. Uh, I'm Rehab al Ghanem, uh, a former basketball player at the Al Ahli Club and national team for almost 20 years, and now uh, uh, the board member uh, at Egyptian Basketball Federation and the head of three on three committee. Uh, I've been working with committee for a long time. We built a lot of experience in three on three, and I became, uh, when I became an Egyptian Basketball Federation board member, uh, we were able to again to work as well, uh, but on a larger scale uh, and to implement all the experience all over Egypt. Uh, it's really an honor uh, uh, to speak uh, and uh, discuss collectively. Um, how to develop an advanced three on three in Africa and we're able to compete at a very high level. Uh, okay. Also, uh, I want to thank Mustafa. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I want to thank Mustafa so and his great team for his great support yes. in preparing for this online conference and extend my thanks okay. to FIBA and FIBA Africa for the support of this conference and made it under their umbrella and eventually thank Egyptian Basketball Federation, Dr. Magdi Abu Freyha and all the board members for uh, their ongoing support for 3-on-3 uh, three three in Egypt. Okay, thank you, uh, Reha. Um, we, are, we are using the two minutes just to introduce ourselves. For sure, yes. you have a lot to tell us about Egypt, and you're going to do so. I will call upon you, and you'll be one of the first presenters. Um, okay. So for now, uh, let's, intro let's know who is on the big, big screen today. And we have the big German brother. Tell us, Robert. Hello to everybody. Um, my name is Robert. Uh, to pronounce my, my family name correctly, it's Rieblinger. 
but I'm not expecting anybody to, to do that correctly. Uh, as Rahab can tell, I'm, I'm struggling myself with certain names to pronounce them um, properly. Um, it's an honor to see um, so many attendees here. Um, it's especially nice to see so many names that I've been in touch with by email or by phone in the past and to finally put a, a name to it. For my role, I'm a FIBA Freak 3 Development Manager. In that role, I'm uh, the main point of contact, especially for our national federations, I'm helping them with developing the game um, nationally, but also internationally. But um, not only this, I'm also in contact with a lot of um, promoters, private promoters. And uh, one of the first ones that, that I've been in contact when I started working um, for Free x 3 is also actually on this webinar, which is Adrian from Sport Arena. Um, and um, yeah, that's it from my side. And I would pass to the next one to introduce yourself. Thank you, Robert. Uh, for sure, we'll have more of you later on. Uh, right now, if we can have Mr. Nicholas Natuhereza introduce uh, himself. He's a man with so many coats here, in many jackets here in Uganda. Uh, if you can introduce yourself uh, to the members. Please unmute yourself first. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well, loud and clear. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Ambrose. And, uh, Obviously, I was one of the, the few lucky people whose name we did not uh, do too much injustice. I guess that's because we're from uh, the same, you know, the, uh, the same place. But I'm yeah, Nicholas Natreza from Uganda, uh, recently appointed technical director with the Federation. But away from that, I've been uh, coaching the last uh, 10 years, both uh, five on five and uh, three on three. And this is my first, uh, uh, I guess, opportunity to be part of the management of three and three boats in Uganda and uh, hopefully beyond. And I'm glad to be part of uh, this conversation. Okay. Thank you, uh, Nicholas. Um, we'll get to you later on. Over now to Adrian Popa, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Adrian uh, Popa. My name is uh, very simple. So yes. <laughs> for sure, it's, uh, it's easy to, to remember. Uh, I am uh, representing Sport Arena, which is a private promoter uh, from Romania that uh, started organizing uh, three on three, three x three events uh, back in uh, 2005. And uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, international experience also. Uh, and just to, to mention, I was part of the crew uh, that was the in the organization of the um, uh, Africa Cup back in 2017 in Togo. So I was uh, I was there together with uh, two of uh, my colleagues from uh, Sport Arena. And um, what else? What else can I say? I'm former basketball player. I played also five on five, also three on three. Actually, I started played uh, playing three on three at Sport Arena, and then I joined uh, their team uh, to organize events. Thank you, Adrian, for that uh, uh, introduction. Um, right now, we are going to go deep into our discussion uh, of the evening. Uh, we'll invite as many to share the experiences and technical advice. Uh, but uh, I want to note uh, that uh, there are different heads uh, of uh, basketball uh, in Africa, I've seen a number of uh, federation presidents. I see Mosa Akida uh, from Nigeria, and I see a number of them. I see Joe. I see uh, so many of you and different coordinators. I see Hilmi. Uh, so we have quite a good representation of um, our continent, especially the English-speaking continent. I must remind us that this is the second session. Uh, the first, uh, the French uh, version of this happened last week. And it was amazing. I attended, but you can, as you can guess, most of the time I was quiet uh, <laughs> because of my lack of good French. Okay, so right now we will start uh, uh, with Rehab, uh, Mike, uh, and uh, if, if we just have to give context to what we want to ask uh, Madame Rehab. Egypt is number one in Africa, number 31 in the FIBA three on three world ranking. Egypt has participated and has won very many medals in, in Africa, 
uh, both for men and women in Madagascar, you were in Uganda last year, you whitewashed everybody, you are in uh, quite uh, many championships and you have enjoyed a lot of success. Uh, and you have qualified this year for World Cup under 18 and under 23, uh, Olympic Games, uh, U18, um, uh, and quite a number of big, big championships that you've qualified and participated in. How did um, Egypt become? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I just, uh, if you don't mind, Amros, uh, because yeah. we're today gathering here, because uh, you guys may know the reason why, but there's a lot of people today who just get, was coming in. We have almost 34 participants in this yeah. panel right now who may not know the reason why they're here and why they consider okay. here. Uh, okay. like why we gathering here so that's the reason why i want to take this moment okay so to to thanks to anybody uh, like everyone and to say to send them my hello and hope they are okay and to present myself and to tell to the people also what we're doing so okay if that okay yeah that's fine uh, you if you want uh, some more minutes uh, for that or i was now, going to give you time at the end uh, so that you, as we crown everything, uh, but um, if you want that's fine. some that's more fine. minutes, yes, okay. it's fine. So, um, yeah, okay. I'm just, be, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be taking like two, three minutes just to explain how 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 everything is set up. So okay. why we and why why we here today? Okay. All right. Thank you. So okay. hi everyone. Uh, hope in these challenging circumstances, we uh, we hope you and your loved one are doing well. So my name is Mohamed Musafa Sal, and I am the president and founder of Serem, one of the pioneers yes. of free entry in Senegal. So I've worked as a sport and venue result manager in the Af um, in the World Beach Game in Doha, also in the African Beach Game as a sport and venue manager of the free entry basketball competition during the African Beach game in Doha, in, 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 in Sal actually. So uh, these experiences have allowed me to be the key leader of the World Freestyle Football Association in Senegal. So our company CRM, which stands sports, international relations and event management, is newly established um, Senegalese company which provides through it experts, strategic consulting to African sport organization in the field of sports management, even organization and training. So it is in this perspective that we have decided uh, to initiate the Africa Talk Sports to continue the dialogue with all stakeholders in sports African, uh, Africa uh, during the period of COVID-19 through the web conferences. These web conferences, Africa Talk Sports, will allow us to take a leap forward and look at how we can tackle the major challenges that our sport will be facing. So it will be, it will be also um, an opportunity for major stakeholders in sports to share their experiences, expertise, and vision. And the choice of the three and three basketball are the first activities of the Africa Talk Sports was motivated by my experience and passion uh, for the discipline that I have been developing um, in Senegal since 2018. So over the past two years, uh, CDM has organized 21 tournaments, uh, which uh, with school and university uh, with the Dare Tree Entry Basketball Project. So as a result, uh, Senegal has climbed on the seventh place of the FIBA Tree Entry Ranking in Africa. And uh, I'm just saying, calling the watch out for our Egyptian friends because we are coming for the for the title, and maybe it may take one or two years, but yeah, we we're gonna be there. So, coming on the training sector, which is one of our main area of expertise, we have also trained young students in sports management at INSEPS in Dakar to give them the opportunity to organize and record their own event in train and tree event maker. So in, addi in additional, we are committed to supporting and advising the world of sports in Africa in all its diversity so that tree and tree can occupy a special place in Africa. So to include as many interest uh, speakers, uh, interested uh, speakers, participants and journalists as possible, we are holding conferences in both French and English as Mr. Ambrose just stated when he was uh, uh, when he was uh, introducing the meeting. So please stay tuned for our upcoming conferences and spread the word. So 
I cannot end this introduction without taking, uh, thanking all the speakers and the participants who are present at this panel and our great moderator Ambrose. So without ado, I will let Ambrose start the panel, uh, have a productive conferences and hope that you will enjoy your time with us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ambrose. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. And for sure, we'll have more of you as we conclude the meeting. Uh, okay. And thank you for the initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very well welcome uh, by the entire uh, basketball family. Right now, we we'll go back over to uh, rehab. Uh, rehab, Egypt yeah. has done a yes. lot and has achieved a lot. Yeah. How did you do this? Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, Egypt, like any other country in Africa, uh, almost have the, the same problems and challenges. Uh, actually, uh, EBS started um, taking three on three in consideration only three or four years ago. Uh, we have met uh, many challenges indeed. Uh, we can able to solve some of them and another part dealt under the, the possible capabilities and conditions. Uh, the remaining part uh, try to find solutions and we continue to making attempts as it's an ongoing challenge as we always work on it. This is the first. Um, um, uh, Egypt starting first uh, uh, to build the, the three on three team structure consists of uh, uh, the present federation and the board member uh, um, and the head of the commission, uh, three on three committee. Uh, event makers, uh, referees, uh, committee members. Just the goal is to spread the game all over Egypt, to get coaches and players and sponsors engaged to the game and make it uh, more popular. Uh, the second thing, uh, I think we um, have the e-learning program. Uh, I think we uh, got uh, five uh, committee members certified with the game. Uh, uh, we have started to have our plan then we started to do, to do our clinics all over Egypt uh, for the event maker to encourage more organizers and make them, make them understand how to create standalone events and to deal with the event maker system. And uh, after that, we do, uh, we uh, care, uh, uh, we give a big consideration to the social media. We created our Facebook page help more people to hear about three on three, uh, spread the game all over in Egypt, uh, give exposures to the sponsors. Um, we publish all the news about the tournaments, dates of the event makers, uh, clinic, uh, three on three national teams news and photos of the players and tournaments. Um, uh, number five, we uh, give a big consideration to our confirmation ratio. We're trying to maximize the players with a confirmed account uh, and to merge the separate ones. Uh, and then uh, we made a, a, a big step, I think, uh, building our national competition structure. For the first time, we did the, the three on three league uh, for under 18 and 23 men and women. Uh, we played uh, in four stages. Uh, it was good, but it's not the best because we encountered conflicts um, between the Egyptian uh, League 5 and 5 and the other uh, uh, local competition. But, uh, but I think the positive point that the most clubs started to think about 3-on-3 three three League and it is valuable. Um, after that, we are uh, thinking of considering hosting a quest. And we did, we did it for the first time. And it was a national base, uh, consisted of 200 teams. Uh, um, um, only by the way, we finished it one day before the Ministry of Sport has suspended all the sports activity uh, because of COVID-19, thank God. Uh, I think it's not enough, but only um, it's a step. It's a good step for us. And finally, um, we, we put our emphasis uh, on keeping from six to eight players in the national team interesting in playing three on three and let them participate in uh, all our events and tournaments to uh, let them focus and uh, uh, get more experience in three on three. That's uh, almost all the strategies developed by the Egyptian Basketball Federation for three on three now. Uh, a very big thank you to uh, Rehab. If I may just run through a few of what you've said. Number one, I hear yourself 
uh, strong let's say structure uh, that yes. you had put a good structure in place. Most importantly, you said you have a board member in charge of three on three, right? Yes. The there president, the Egyptian, the, the, the president of the Egyptian Basketball Federation first and then the board member uh, that's uh, 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 responsible for the three on three committee. And then uh, about uh, 20 organizers and uh, 50 uh, three on three referees and um, uh, event makers, five event makers. Yes. Okay, so um, uh, that is a good point. Number two, you talk about the e-learning that you have done. Of course, we expect I expect Robert and uh, yeah, Robert to do this some good justice because we have quite some good resources from FIBA. Um, number three, you talk about the clinics that you've done. That's capacity building. Yes. Uh, number four, you talk about your social media and all still under capacity building. Number five. You talked about confirmation ratios. You have managed your database very well. Yes. I think uh, from me, you have done quite, quite an amazing job. And uh, we know so many people will have questions uh, for you, but I uh, will pick only a few. And we advise everyone that is logged in to be, uh, they can send through a question uh, in the chat, you know, on the chat box uh, below on your screen. You can post up any, question that you would want uh, us to attend to or that you want to direct to any of the speakers. Uh, but from what Rehab has said has resonated with one of the things that I wanted to share on this meeting later on, uh, which was a new strategy for three on three for Africa, but we'll have more of that. Uh, for now, I want to uh, welcome uh, the next speaker, uh, who is gonna be Robert. Uh, Robert has been at the helm of uh, three on three management for quite uh, a while. FIBA is today one of the biggest contributors to the development of three on three. Uh, how has the leading federation focused on uh, five on five been able to develop three on three? Uh, if you can tell us a little bit more about that, but also if you can shed more light on the resources uh, that are available at FIBA. Uh, for anyone that is interested in uh, growing three on three on the continent. Um, and also most importantly, maybe you will be able to talk more about the structure of three on three at the top and how it affects us down. How do we, how do we deal, how do federations deal with, uh, the, uh, with, your, or with your team and how do the promoters and such like deal with the board? If you can shed a little bit of light on that. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Ambrose. Um, you asked, so how um, FIBA set up the project and how we um, started the project and um, actually brought the project to where it is now in the discipline. Um, and um, our path started uh, in 2010, and we very quickly um, set up a, a dedicated team for 3x3. And this is also one of the takeaways for um, how to develop it. You need dedicated people nowadays. It became a very complex, a very structured discipline already. So you need a, uh, a dedicated person at the beginning, growing potentially into a team, depending on how big it gets. Um, we uh, within FIBA, we have a fully dedicated 3x3 team that covers several aspects similar to 5 and 5, um, whether it's 3x3 communication, whether it's 3x3 digital support, whether it's 3x3 development, uh, 3x3 competition um, team. So we have those different teams, and this is how we set it up. Um, a second key thing for us was to, um, to be an embracing discipline. So our goal from the very beginning was to, to grow um, 3x3 and to make it an embracing discipline that can actually grow the basketball community. So we wanted to bring um, additional people in. We didn't want to keep the people that already play 5x5 five five busy or more busy. We wanted to bring in new people and grow the family. And this, uh, for this purpose, we used new resources. And those new resources were not only our federations, um, not only the club structure, these resources came from private promoters who have been running um, basketball activities in the background for the last couple of years or even decades in some countries, mainly from the streetball um, scene, from the streetball community. 
and we try to incorporate those people and we were quite successful and um, I think Adrian can shed some light on this later on from his side because he was um, one of the or Port Arena is also one of the um, promoters that Eba is working very closely with. A third aspect is um, we center our um, our um, VX3 project a lot around um, a digital tools, which is the, um, the registration platform, which is our event maker software. And all of those tools are available for free for everybody. They're available for free for the players, where the players can register themselves for free. They're available for free for the federations, for the promoters. Everybody who wants to engage in uh, 3 x 3 can engage without any payments involved in the beginning. Um, these were the main steps. From there, we grew, we, we built a, a competition structure based on um, already established tournaments, as I said, from private promoters mainly, but also from some federations who had already their own um, um, structures. And we built a professional circuit on the one hand and a national team competition on the other hand. Um, the professional circuit um, obviously um, is led by our world tour and nowadays by um, since last year also by our women's series. Below that we have qualifying tournaments that are um, called challengers or what um, Ray have mentioned before quests which is usually national team uh, national championships of a country um, or national tours in a country. A challenger is like a mini world tour. It is like a qualifier, international qualifier to the, um, to the world tour. And um, as of this year, we had planned, <laughs> unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to deliver something um, which is called Super Quest and which yeah. actually targets um, the African uh, market as well. Because one of the things that FIBA really believes in and which we work in and which we recommend also to our national federations, for example, is clustering. And we believe that, um, especially at the beginning, you need to join forces. And we wanted to cluster certain areas within Africa, allowing them to qualify teams directly to, um, to the world tour. And um, so this is roughly the competition system from the pro mm. circuit uh, regarding the competition system on the national team side. We have built a competition system for, um, uh, with the World Cup on the very top. Um, below that, we have Africa Cup. We have Africa Cup qualifiers, depending on how many teams register. We have these competitions for under 17 Stone Cups, Africa Cup, um, mm -hmm. for under 18 World Cup. We have open competition for Africa Cup and World Cup. And the whole uh, national team base as an incentive for our national federations and for the basketball communities centers a lot around our ranking. All those events, the pro circuit events and the national team events, they um, award ranking points to the players. And those players collect those ranking points then for the national federation, allowing the national federation to qualify to the World Cup. So um, one of the key aspects here is also the, the ranking or a ranking system that we built, a very unique ranking system, which ranks all the players worldwide in all categories in the same ranking. It allows every player to find his position. Um, every player um, collects uh, ranking points for a tournament that he's playing. And um, every player basically can contribute to his country qualifying to the World Cup. So um, to summarize this whole talk, we create the a, a dedicated um, competition system with pro circuit and national teams. We centered everything around our digital tools, which nowadays is what all the players, all the young guys are focused on, digital tools to organize tournaments, um, digital promotion in the social media. We work with clustering. We embrace um, the, the existing 3x3 community, and we try to incentivize everything through our ranking. OK. Um, Robert. I'm going to ask you to elaborate further uh, because I've had so many questions come in about the super quest uh, number, you know, number one and two, the event maker. We must of course appreciate that uh, not everyone on this platform right now uh, has uh, the same level uh, of 
technical know-how as far as some of these things are concerned. But number one, before I bother Robert, uh, is to highlight the resource uh, that earlier on Rehab talked about, which is the e-learning uh, that FIBA offers for free uh, online. And this is available uh, for anyone who is interested in uh, promoting three on three in uh, being involved in three on three anywhere on the in the world. Uh, by the time you do the course, I did it myself. It's a course you can do in one night or two nights. Uh, by the time you are done with it, you have a very good clear view of some of these things that I'm going to ask Robert, like the event maker, and even uh, the, the the pro circuits uh, that uh, three on three runs. Uh, but for the purpose of uh, this conference and whoever is online if you can quickly uh, talk more about the super quest uh, and uh, the event maker just for the benefit of the people who are on the platform thank you robert okay um the e-learning is a um is a online learning platform which fiba provides mainly to our national federations but also to everybody else who's involved and can request from uh, 3x3 at fiba.com um, it is a, basically, a, like I said, an online planning, a learning platform um, with different modules that you can um, go through. And at the end, um, there is a certification test, um, which you can repeat until you finally get certified. Um, the idea of this tool, which is uh, regularly getting updated and which is available in um, several languages, um, it is available in Spanish, French, um, Arabic, um, English, I think even Portuguese, um, that should cover most of the languages, I think, on the continent. Um, again, this is complementary, and this teaches you the in and outs of, uh, of 3x3. Um, further, for national federations, it's an eligibility criteria to have an e-learning certified person within the federation uh, if they want to participate in national team competitions. Um, Second aspect that you mentioned is um, the event maker. Um, the event maker is um, in the end a, um, a competition management application, which is um, aware online. Um, we have different um, versions of this, um, uh, of this application with uh, premiums and super premiums, which then are behind the paywall. But the, the basic one, the necessary one, to organize 3x3 competitions um, is a freeware, which everybody can download, everybody can register. And this is what everybody, everything centers around. Competitions that are organized through this platform award ranking points and are recognized by FIBA and become automatically FIBA endorsed. Competitions that are not using this platform are not captured by us and to, to uh, put it harshly, just don't exist for us. Um, so this is the first thing that I want to encourage everybody, like if you run competitions, run it through the event maker, FIBA provides the full support around those, um, in, uh, around this application, meaning um, you can request webinars with screen sharing, where we teach you um, how these, um, how these uh, applications work, all the functionalities, and you will see it is a very comprehensive application which um, provides you with everything that some of you probably, and I, I'm talking globally, some of us globally probably still do with pen and paper. So it is a really benefit for the organizers. Um, the last thing, mm. or do you have a question on this? No, 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 no question. Okay. okay. In one minute, please, if you can conclude, please, please. it's okay. Yeah. And In the last thing was the super yeah. quest. Mm. And the super quest is something that we um, uh, developed lately to target a sp specific um, market, specific areas, because we are aware that the pro circuit with the world tour and the challenges has developed quite quickly and requires certain financial resources. So we tried to come up with a product which allows to get invested into the pro circuit at a reasonable price with reasonable budget, which is affordable for all areas in the world, and which, in, uh, which basically secures that a team from this specific region can make it to the, um, to, the, uh, to the world tour. In particular, this means we have a, a, team, a 16 team competition with purely African teams. Um, you earn a certain amount of prize money at the beginning, 
Um, the event is highly ranked in uh, FIBA's World Tour and it qualifies uh, in FIBA's um, um, ranking system. It qualifies two teams directly to the World Tour. This is basically the super prize. Thank you, Robert. Uh, very well said there. If I may just add one thing. Um, uh, what well, is a competition that, of course, will be starting in Africa? That is the uh, Under-23 Nations League, and uh, we had been working hard before COVID to make sure that we start uh, the league in Africa. We had some countries already interested in this. We had the likes of Nigeria, Kenya, Senegal, and so many other countries interested. Uh, I, I have, I know, I have Hilmi here who wanted to do something around that. I know SuperQuest, uh, some countries were interested in hosting it. We had Mozadi from Angola who was supposed to do something with the, this product in June or July. Uh, and, and also we had uh, the likes of um, Nigeria wanting to host uh, at least uh, the U23 Nations League. So I said this to clear the air because Robert, some people have been saying, why aren't you giving Africa uh, the big tournaments, uh, why aren't you allowing Africa hosts? But I know as having been part of three on three, I know that these products are always open for us to host in Africa, but it need, they need some logistical challenges. We need to, have, to be able to get people who can invest in them and it's doable, it's possible. So we need to, uh, you know, to work knowing that it is possible to have the pro circuits on the African continent, but uh, that is going to take a little bit of work from ourselves. Now, uh, in the meantime, I think we'll switch over to Uganda. Uganda hosted uh, the Africa Cup last year. It was an amazing event. I attended it and uh, some of the members on this platform did attend the, uh, the Africa Cup. Africa Cup is your equivalent for those who are new in 3 on 3 is our African Nations Cup. Now, uh, we have Nicolas Natuhereza from Uganda. Uh, online. Uh, he's a technical director as introduced uh, by himself earlier on. Nick, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, okay, you are already clear. Tell us, what are your strategies for growing three on three uh, in uh, Uganda? Uh, and how did you do this whole Africa Cup as a, uh, as a country? Yeah, thank you, Ambrose. Uh, obviously, as I think our strategies start from uh, you know the things that we've been trying to do over the years, and I can say that uh, most of what we've done has been competing in uh, in tournaments uh, both in Africa and uh, you know outside Africa. Uh, we have been able to participate in the World Cup for the under 18 and the women most especially, and uh, over time we have noticed that as 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 much as that has been good for us, and uh, you know we've been ranked uh, quite well over time because of participating in these competitions, we've discovered that uh, we have put a lot more effort in making sure that we do a lot of three on three uh, locally, that is uh, both at the youth level and uh, open level. So one of the major things that we're looking at right now is to how can we get three on three played in, uh, in schools and hopefully have a, a secondary schools, you know, tour and championship to to be able to get the, the kids at that level engaged. And also at the university level, we already have some, some universities taking part in uh, you know, university championships in Africa and uh, uh, you know, at the world, world level. Uh, last year we had uh, one of our universities represent us at uh, the University World Cup. So I think we were looking to encourage more universities to, to participate in these championships, but also most importantly, set up a championship for them at locally that they can uh, take part in. And I think once we get the secondary schools and the universities uh, involved and engaged, I think that will be, it will be a big boost for us because we'll get more, more players involved in three on three. And I also think it will help us to develop uh, the players to be able to compete internationally as well. And uh, obviously we were, we were lucky and privileged to host the Africa Cup. Uh, uh, this last year, uh, like you said, it was a you know it was a major event. It was exciting, and uh, we are still not very happy about many of the things that uh, uh, we didn't do well. And we have uh, since had in a discussion with 
uh, FIBA uh, to discuss some of the things that we didn't do well and uh, we're looking forward to uh, doing much better. And obviously one of the biggest was the fact that you know, sponsorship was a big thing for us. We did not, we were not able to get you know, as much sponsorship as we would have hoped, at least in terms of uh, you know, finances to, to make the, the event much more, uh, much more exciting and uh, you know, to kind of reduce the, the, the logistical challenges that we had you know, along the way. Uh, but nevertheless, I can you know, promise everyone that we're working hard to make sure that the next tournament and event, if it happens this year, uh, will be much better than the last one. And I know that uh, we're supposed to be hosting it uh, two more years, that is this year and next year. And we, have, we learned a lot from the last one and we're looking forward to, you know, to make the upcoming ones much better by trying to involve the, you know, the corporate community, you know, uh, hopefully get more funding and sponsorship on board and also the government uh, to, you know, recognize this as a major event that puts us on the map and hopefully we can get support from from them as well. Yeah, but I think uh, generally we're looking to see that we can get more activity back home, you know, before we think about the international tournaments. As as good as those are, I think the most important thing is that we, we have three on three locally recognized as a, as a major platform for uh, both basketball development and also to put uh, Ugandan basketball on the map. Thank you, uh, Nicholas. Of course, I know you're a humble man. You don't want to boast about the many achievements that you have uh, had as a country. Uh, but Uganda, I think, has a, also at some point uh, uh, enjoyed its fair share of, um, uh, of participation at a very, very high level. I was uh, with the, at that time, I was the federation president uh, in Zian. Uh, for yeah. the World Cup and also in Manila, Philippines, and uh, we, the country has enjoyed a little bit of success. Uh, so we see uh, you highlight a number of things. Number one is that participation in local and international uh, competitions seem to help federations improve their ranking. Uh, I think that's yeah. a, a take home for everybody on the chat group to know, and also to know that all categories will contribute to your ranking if we can yeah. take that up, uh, including the universities uh, that we have uh, to you know, compete in uh, the university games. I also yeah. uh, uh, take it that we'll have a more exciting Africa Cup uh, this year, hopefully. Of course, for all of us and from me as the head of the council for three on three, uh, we just have to inform everyone and just note them, uh, to give them a bit of notice that the program could change. The times are difficult in face of COVID. So the, the calendar has been rattled a bit, uh, but at the end, we believe that we can use three on three to kickstart basketball. And I want to encourage all of us uh, to start way right within your countries uh, to make sure that uh, you start local events. Why do I say this? It's going to be very difficult that the whole international community will open up at the same time. But as soon as your country opens up for uh, sports activities, if you can, please start organizing three on three events. They should be easier uh, to organize than uh, the five on five. But also as highlighted earlier on by Robert and by uh, uh, our lady here in the house, Rehab, E-learning, e-learning as a tool is very, very important. That we can do in this COVID time. We can equip ourselves in this COVID time to be ready to start much activity after uh, COVID. Now, we have a very, very experienced- um, Ambrose, uh, three of yes. Ambrose, just uh, because the question was raised um, in the chat from, uh, I think it was Helmi. Um, Regarding the e-learning, um, this is one of our complimentary um, offers that we have, and we believe it is really necessary for everybody to participate in this e-learning because it teaches you the in and outs of 3x3 and the whole 3x3 structure. Um, everybody can request this e-learning free of charge from us. So, and there's no limit to how many of those vouchers, uh, access vouchers you have. This is a complimentary offer from FIBA. So whenever um, somebody um, needs 
a voucher, just email 3x3 at viva.com and tell yeah, us how many you need of those. Yeah, but thank you. Um, um, uh, thank you uh, for that, uh, and, uh, you know, clarification. I don't know if you can have, uh, Mustafa, do you want to add anything on this? Because I know you have done something in uh, Senegal. Uh, you have trained even uh, younger, uh, uh, you know, kids to come and manage in three on three. Tell us some more. Yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm going to play it like Nicola uh, did, just to play it a bit humble. I think the most important things is I want to just come back to the point where you was talking about the research project about the uh, FIBA Africa, the, the the way you guys now thinking of uh, to develop the tree and tree in Africa, and I think it is the main things. Guys are talking about. I've seen people asking about question about sponsoring, but before you go in and and, and looking for a sponsor, you gotta have a player. So how are you gonna train the player? You 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 need to have you need to have tree and tree coordinator. How are you gonna how are you gonna motivate them? You know, I think that's the most important things today. That we, we sh that's where we should uh, reorient the the, the 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 conversation or even the um, the discussions about it. Say like how the the, the federations um, can help the train three coordinator, and how the federation today can um, uh, give a push to the private. Promoter, I, I think on that side, Adrian can 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 give a good contribution about it, and also um, Ambrose, who knows better than me the research project. But I think is the most the most important things us we need today as Africans uh, pioneers of the tree entry basketball is the, the the supports. I'm not talking about financial because supports can be can be moral, and I think it's mean a lot. Somebody who's Who's, who's doing anything that he can to, to, to organize an event. If somebody from the, from the, from the Federation is just coming and say, hey, well done. That's, that's a moral motivation. That's, I think that's what we need today in, in, uh, in, in Africa. And uh, if, if, if you, Ambrose, you can uh, talk about, again, the research projects or the FIBA Africa, that will be really uh, good. So then like the participants, they can learn more about it. So that's the contribution okay. I want to bring on. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mustafa, and thank you for what you're doing for three on three. I don't want to preempt any member, so I was allowing everyone to contribute before I add a little bit. And uh, you know we have Adrian with very, very good knowledge uh, you know, about hosting big events. Adrian, as a very successful private organizer in the, in the world of the three on three, and uh, your participation in um, Africa basket since 2017 in Togo. How do you think uh, you can support, uh, you know, federations can, support, can be supported to develop three on three? Or how can we support the federation to develop three on three? And what is your vision uh, for the development of three on three in Africa, you as Adrian as a promoter? Thanks, Ambrose. Uh, hello again, everyone. I don't know if uh, all of you were here from the very beginning. Uh, so, um, uh, first of all, um, uh, as a private, uh, as a private promoter, uh, we don't uh, we don't have anything to do with the uh, national teams or raising players or uh, I don't know grow players. What we can do is to organize events. So this is our main task, and uh, uh, as a private promoter, we can uh, uh, help developing three-on-three -three basketball by offering the, the platform for the players to develop. They come to our tournaments, they are playing, they are earning their points in the, in the ranking. And the most yes. important thing is that the points are going to the, to the country. So mm -hmm. basically, as a private promoter, you are helping uh, the federation uh, grow in the, in the FIBA 3x3 uh, ranking. So uh, our vision was always uh, uh, organize events. And uh, as, uh, as an example, uh, the country uh, where, I came from, where I come from, Romania, it's a small basketball country. Uh, we don't have a big name uh, in five on five. Uh, we didn't previously went to any Olympic games uh, or world championships uh, in uh, five on five. A uh, couple of times we went to the uh, Eurobasket, uh, especially in, uh, on women. But uh, last year, 
uh, we qualified our women uh, uh, 3x3 team to the Olympic Games only by organizing tournaments. So uh, we organized a lot of events, quests, uh, challenges, women's series, and we offered the chance uh, to our players to play at home, not to travel, uh, I don't know, uh, in some other parts of the world uh, to gain points, but we organized a lot of events to offer the chance to our players to, uh, to gain that points at home. So I think uh, for, uh, for any, uh, any private promoter, and especially for, for the federations, because uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, types. You know, sometimes the federations are very active. Sometimes uh, the federations, are, uh, they don't do so many things, but it's important to maintain a balance and it's important to have a very good cooperation between federations and private promoters because only together uh, you can achieve uh, your goal. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Um, I, I have some few tech homes. Number one, um, I think for all the federation uh, heads that could be here and also leaders at different levels, I, I think we needed also to hear from Adrian also get affirmation from uh, Robert that promoters uh, to you as a federation, they are only helping you even shine. They're helping you achieve better, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rating, ranking. Uh, they are not going to interfere, you know, with your national federations. I know a few, a few uh, countries have worked with promoters to send uh, some of their players to very, very big uh, championships uh, in, in Europe where they wanted some bit of financial bridging, but they are just pro providing a platform for us to grow three on three in our countries. So we need to support them, we need to work with them. But also just to highlight is that we need to streamline the way we work uh, with the, uh, with the uh, promoters. And uh, just to uh, add a little bit of context of this as FIBA uh, Africa Council for uh, uh, Youth Basketball and three on three, we've come up with a, a strategy, of course, this is going to be fully launched. We have a council meeting that will happen in two weeks from now. Uh, but uh, since last year, when I came into office, we came up with a, a strategy with a small acronym called RESET. RESET, R stands for restructure, E stands for empower, uh, S stands for simplify, and uh, E everywhere, and then T transcend. What we are saying, and now one of the first things that we had to do is to influence uh, the way three on three is structured at the national level. If you remember what Rehab said at the start is that Egypt Federation in on the board, they have a member uh, in charge of three on three. Uh, and some countries have not been doing this. They will have a national federation, they have someone who does a three-on-three e-learning -three e coordinator course, and he, there's no way he can influence the decisions at the board level. So uh, we have had uh, we, we had a discussion at the central board, and we are happy that the central board allowed that every national federation is going to be uh, pushed down as a directive, and we have Dr. Bill listening in that every national federation will have a person that is responsible for three on three on the National Federation Board. He could be in charge of three on three and youth basketball or just that, but the, there has to be a transition where even your constitution uh, supports that. Why? We need to have someone who is planning for three on three. And that same person will be able to coordinate well with a, a three on three coordinator plus he will work with uh, the, prom the promoter, will work with the same coordinator to make sure that your country, you know, can, uh, you know, can improve in ranking. But also under our strategy, when we come to Empower, we are going to be doing as many clinics as we can. That's why we are encouraging you to do e-learning in this COVID time. And there, there are also online clinics that have, been, have already started with FIBA. 515, I'm sure they are also working on the three on three, uh, other e-learning uh, programs that will come up. Uh, but uh, to you can't achieve so much with very, very uh, low or weak capacity. You must grow your internal capacity as a federation. That's why we're saying you need to 
be empowered right from the technical from the uh, from the referees to the players themselves in your country then simplify uh, we are saying three on three uh, three on three is a street is street basketball reorganized. There are so many forms of street basketball that came uh, to form one street basketball, which you call three on three now. So keep it simple. Every organ tournament that you would want to have in your neighborhood, if you can put it on the event maker, then it becomes official. If you don't work with the event maker that Robert talked about, that tournament is as good as not have happened at all. So to help your country improve the ranking, uh, work with promoters, work with anyone, work with uh, marketing agencies, and th that will push you to the everywhere to make sure that three on three is played everywhere, everywhere as far as places are concerned and with the different agencies and organization and link it in this time that we are in with the so many, hum it could be humanitarian causes uh, or anything that is moving around your country. It could be the marketing of, uh, of a company so that at least uh, people will see value, that a company will see value uh, putting their money in three on three. Their marketing managers want to promote their brands. How can they partner with you? If you have numbers around your three on three, some people want to market their product, they will come and partner with you. Then at the end, you will transcend, meaning that you are going to go beyond where you were years before. So. Um, this, that, that is the little I can say about uh, the strategy that we have, but to support this strategy, uh, maybe Robert at some point can also reaffirm that FIBA will support you with, a, uh, with, with some bit of uh, uh, materials, uh, and we have had some bit of, uh, you know, resources that have been pushed down uh, from from uh, clocks, uh, game clocks to basketballs, Wilson standard basketballs, um, uh, and so many others. Together also, we have had, uh, especially for this English speaking group that we have here, we have had together with the, uh, the FIBA Foundation, uh, we have had a Young Lions Cup uh, that has been going on and is actually is going to go on also this year that has helped at the grassroots development and also uh, training of the young managers for three on three and for basketball to go at, at large. Um, so a lot is happening. And also if I may call, of course, on my boss again, uh, Dr. Billy, I know there's also a lot of resources that uh, he has as the director uh, of uh, uh, basketball in Africa. There are also some resources that uh, we receive from Abidjan that are sent to different federations. So when these things come down, please, you can use them as a federation, share them with the promoter that is in the country, as long as you make good and, uh, you know, a very good use of these items. Uh, we are trying to work together uh, to grow the game. I know there are quite a number of questions uh, that are streaming in, and uh, um, I, I, I want to uh, I don't know, Mustafa, as he comes through, uh, I will receive some questions um, uh, that might be out there um, uh, from members. But before we do that, uh, before we do that, Adrian, how can you advise uh, federations to work with the corporate world to raise finances to grow three on three? Please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, your uh, your question was regarding the the financing, uh, of course, for us as a private promoter, uh, uh, having a source, uh, a financing source, it's uh, it's the key because otherwise uh, we cannot organize events. We don't have uh, funds from the state or from uh, other public uh, resources and I think also the the federations uh, should uh, go and develop being uh, should develop uh, the marketing side of uh, 3x3 because as we have learned uh, in the past 10-15 uh, years uh, this discipline is very appealing for sponsors and especially for those uh, brands that are targeting uh, young people uh, because 3x3 basketball, it's a very good uh, product for, uh, for young people 
because the games are short. Uh, the, the pace, it's really fast. Uh, so it's an excellent product, uh, especially uh, for online broad broadcasting. Because now, of course, all the kids, all the youngsters are with their phone in uh, their hands and uh, the attention span lowered in the past years and the 10, 15 minute basketball game, it's, uh, it's uh, all they need, you know, uh, they can watch the, uh, for 10, 15 minutes, they can go and then do something else. And uh, this game, the tournaments and also the, the online broadcasting can be very appealing for, for sponsors because they can easily uh, market their products to this uh, young audience. There are a lot, a lot of ways uh, during the events or during the broadcasts uh, to expose yourself as a brand, uh, to organize uh, different contests for spectators, uh, to place branding in the, in the, in the event and uh, to organize side activities, which is uh, also a key part of every 3XT event. You have the, as you, as you, uh, as you know, uh, from, from the big events, you have the game itself, but then you have the side activities for the spectators, which are, I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, a key element for, for sponsorship. Thank you. Thank you for that insight, um, uh, Adrian. We have uh, quite a number of questions in the panel on the side here. I see one uh, from uh, uh, Robert from Zambia. He's directed to Rob, uh, to, to, uh, to his colleague. Uh, no, this is, yeah. Uh, Robert, how can, Zambia is saying, how can they access courts and how can they access uh, all these things that we are talking about? Now, this is FIBA World, Robert, your department. If you can shed a little bit of light on that. Um, uh, then later on, I will, I will react to uh, Victor Muzadi, my friend who I see is also here. If you can just say, in a minute, something about that. Um, so the first thing, and uh, there's a general misconception, unfortunately, is that 3x3, in, um, the first thing that you need for 3x3 is equipment. The first thing you need for 3x3 is a lot of financial resources. This is um, not the case. This is the beauty of 3x3, and this is why we consider 3x3 as such a great tool to develop basketball. Um, and as a prominent example, and somebody who's on the call, if we talk about Adrian, Adrian can confirm when they started developing 3x3, the first tournaments, they played it basically in a demolished or abandoned sports facility of a university. Um, very basic, just uh, some dirty hard court and um, a basket, a hoop, no roof, nothing. And they organized their tournaments there and they grew it out from there. So. Um, Obviously, we are aware of um, the, the struggles, especially of our federations in, uh, in Africa when it comes to equipment. But that's the beauty of 3x3 that we actually need very little. We don't need specific high equip, uh, highly equipped um, sports facilities. What we need is just a normal basketball facility. When you can play 5x5, five five, you can play 3x3 in there. Um, if you play... Um, if you, um, if you play, um, if you have a court with only one basket, and even if it's just asphalt, if it's, even if it's just dirt, you have a basket, you have a ball, just put the lines on the floor and you can play. Even our rules are, allow for that. Now, of course, if you want to develop um, 3x3 further uh, to the next stage, of course, if you um, want to professionalize slowly, if, of course, if you want to attend some sponsors, you need more equipment. Um, one source of equipment, um, and I think it is an admirable investment that Alphonse and his team have done, has been FIBA Africa, who have um, provided courts, bas uh, balls, um, and even, I think, backstops um, to the different federations. Um, the other sources can be, for example, Olympic Solidarity. Um, I've checked, and uh, there's a long list of um, countries and national federations that have not used the Olympic solidarity for basketball um, in the cycle 2017 to 2020. Olympic solidarity is also available for 3x3. So these all can be resources and, uh, to get um, uh, equipment, to, to get um, 
the resources, the, the facilities that you need. Another thing is, again, the cooperation with private entities um, in return um, for exposure on the courts. So there's different opportunities to do that. All of that being said, I am aware that it's easier said than done. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Robert, for for shedding a little bit, quite some light uh, on the resources that are available. Uh, and I will emphasize uh, what you talked about, uh, the Olympic solidarity. Uh, there is, uh, most of our NOCs don't take advantage of the team support grant. Team support grant is one of the biggest grants that the International Olympic Committee has in the structure of funding. So if as a federation, you can talk to your Olympic Committee uh, on how to apply for team support grant and also for technical development, uh, this can, be, it can help uh, you. And also most importantly, structure yourself well to attract corporate financing. Um, uh, but as we do this, I see um, a comment from uh, Victor Muzadi, who is a promoter. Uh, he, he's from Angola, and he's done a lot in the southern part of Africa to promote uh, three on three. Uh, he highlights on the importance of synchronization of calendars and activities uh, uh, between the federation and the promoters. So uh, I want to emphasize um, the importance of working very well, being well structured in a country that you have someone in charge of three on three, but that same person should be able to bring on board the promoters and the coordinator of three on three in the country to make sure that the programs of three on three are incorporated in the national basketball development calendar of the country. Uh, you don't want to be clashing. We are still young as a sport. You don't want to be clashing on events with five on five. We know that we still have players that are doing both five on five and three on three in most of the countries. We, are, we don't have many professionals like you see the likes of uh, Usain Barut and, uh, and the like. Uh, so it's important that you coordinate and come up with a calendar that does not contradict each other uh, and also to try as much as you can to reduce conflict by sharing information and supporting each other. Uh, like we have uh, uh, seen earlier on, at the end, it helps your federation to be able to improve its ranking if your promoters are working in your country. Adrian has told you that he helps uh, his country to even qualify for very, very big tournaments because of the events that they were hosting. So I want to uh, start our early conclusion uh, of this. Um, uh, first of all, um, uh, to uh, if I get any other questions in the chat box, for sure, I will, I will pick them up. Uh, but as we conclude, I want to just highlight these few take homes uh, for all of us. Number one, it, it would be structure, structure, structure. You must have supporting structure for three on three. Uh, you must have people in charge of three on three and responsible for three on three. And as we say that, uh, I will talk about the structure, that structure must be empowered. There are many people who have uh, been given offices to run for three on three, but they are not yet uh, well competent in e-learning, uh, you know, for three on three. Uh, you need to be able to build your capacity and improve your capacity as uh, a country, or even if it's a promoter. Uh, I want to say that if we all do that, uh, then we'll be able to grow faster. Um, your capacity as in relation to social media uh, is also, and what you're able to do with it now, the times have changed and uh, we didn't have a big highlight. I think we had, we had a bit of this from uh, Robert and Adrian. COVID has changed the entire platform. You see this meeting with over 30 something, uh, some, uh, so many uh, participants on this platform. This has been made so because of the effect of COVID. As we speak now, uh, Zoom is bigger than the big, the, than the top five, top five airlines in the world. In the world, you combine the, the likes of Delta and the like. So Zoom is the new way to go organize meetings, organize, uh, you know, some workshops, uh, train with the tools that are available, improve capacity so that when we open up, you already have the capacity to run ahead. 
uh, but also, as we say that, say that keep data of whoever is uh, doing three on three and all the events, capture all the events that you are uh, hosting in your country. If you don't use the event maker, then no one knows you, no one know that event. Uh, then uh, empower, empower the people who are doing three on three, the agencies, uh, the promoters, if you can empower them, then they will help you as a country to shine. I know there are so many other promoters I'm seeing here, including the likes of President Kida, who have also has also done you know the same and Hilmi uh, and the other members and Joe and team. So let's continue to do that. We are going to um, try and conclude uh, this talk and get a bit of closing uh, word or remark from all the panelists today. Then at the end, we'll have Mustafa and myself concluding. I don't know if I'll be able to get any other of the big administrators on the platform. I don't know if the doctor wants to say something, uh, but if I will start with Rehab in one minute, your okay. concluding remarks, say something to us, encourage us or something, say to us something. Uh, yes, uh, I want to um, give some advice to uh, us all in Africa. Um, Africa uh, need to spread the three on three in all countries. Uh, Afri need, uh, Africa need to allocating more three on three competition rather than the Africa Cup, which is good, but we want major tournaments. Uh, uh, teams from every uh, co uh, every country in Africa should connect to the elite tournament, as Robert said, uh, because uh, the player are not used to uh, a higher level, uh, will not be able to successful in these levels. I think Africa should connect to elite uh, um, uh, pro circuits uh, like uh, under 23 Nation League or Women's Series, a Challenger and uh, a World uh, Tour. Um, I think um, uh, all African countries uh, should build an excellent national team uh, because I think uh, the new FIBA amendment, uh, the winner of the Africa Cup should uh, directly qualify to the World Tour. Yes, Robert, or not? To the World, to the World Cup. Cup, not to World the World Cup. Cup. Yes, yes, World, yes. World Cup, sorry. Yes, okay. Mm. Yes, I think um, uh, um, Africa should... Uh, work on developing uh, the, uh, the po uh, both uh, genders, female and male, not, uh, not uh, men only. I think uh, this would be great. Okay, thank you, Rehab. And I can see you are keeping your, your antennas up there. You are ready to do, you want to dominate Africa. You already know the next step and the new uh, legislations. So good luck to Egypt as we thank see you, you in so Uganda, much. hopefully at the end of the year. Um, uh, right now, let me go to uh, Adrian first. Adrian, your Thank closing you so remarks. Much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks You're for welcome, having me yeah. and uh, stay safe. Okay, bye. Okay, same to you. Adrian, tell us. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, it was a question earlier regarding the if it's three on three or three x three or uh, uh, some other uh, <laughs> uh, some other names. So it's 3x3, uh, as uh, advised by uh, the communication manager of FIBA, Mr. Julian Debov, it's 3x3. So we should all uh, say, uh, say 3x3. And I will keep uh, um, uh, my topic on this communication part because now during these times, as uh, you mentioned, Ambrose, that we are doing a lot of meetings on uh, Zoom and we are staying a lot online. I think it's a very good way and a very good time uh, to keep the community together uh, and even grow the 3 xt community. Uh, uh, we have a lot of content uh, and we can share it uh, with all the parties involved in 3 x 3 and we can, uh, we can discuss. Uh, uh, so uh, when everything, all this uh, crazy thing with COVID-19 will end, uh, we can be uh, prepared to, uh, to enter the court, let's say, to play uh, to real play uh, 3x3, which is uh, what all of us uh, are waiting for and are, lo are looking for. So I think doing a lot of uh, a lot of things online, communicate a lot about uh, 3 on 3 on social media, on websites, um, try to identify 
players and try to uh, to convince them and to bring them to 3x3 basketball, uh, try to make uh, 3x3 stars, let's say, uh, from uh, five on five players. Uh, uh, and uh, I think the, this is a good time uh, to do this, to promote 3x3 a lot uh, online and keep the community together. Okay. Thank you, Adrian, uh, for that and wonderful uh, contribution. And I will request all speakers, if you don't mind, you will allow in our report for this uh, to include your contacts so that uh, whoever receives your contact can, in their free time, you know, network with you, seek advice, um, uh, and you impart on them, if you don't mind, please. Okay, um, before uh, we get Robert as the last speaker, I want to get two other people. Number one is going to be Nicholas to give us you your, uh, to give us your closing remarks. And we have a lady from Cape Verde. Uh, if she will be available also, I know she's somewhere logged in just to say a word or two. We want to be a little bit gender sensitive, but also to share experiences uh, from uh, different genders. I don't like the very many male voices that we are having. So hopefully that you will have another good word uh, from her like we have. So Nicholas, give us your closing remarks as we wait uh, to hear Siri from uh, if she's online. Nicholas, please unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Okay, good. Okay. I think we are a bit of, uh, yes, Nicholas is on now, it's okay. He's okay, on. we have a technical problem. Uh, Mustafa, if you can help uh, Nicholas unmute himself. Um, yeah. Yes, he's good now. I think, I think he should be good now. Yeah, thank you, Ambrose, again. And I think uh, this has been uh, a fruitful discussion and I've definitely personally picked a lot. And uh, one of the things that Mustafa said about uh, players, uh, I think we can't put too much focus on just the, you know, logistics and organizing. We need to put a lot of emphasis on, uh, you know, the players, you know, playing ability and being able to be successful in the game of three on three. Because obviously in Africa, most of our players are, you know, are conditioned to five on five. So I think we need to make effort to make sure that these players get exposure uh, in the three on three game. Uh, from experience with Uganda, we have had uh, challenges at international level in the tournaments. We see that some of our players are not uh, are not conditioned enough to you know, at least adjust the style of three on three. And I think that's the big takeaway for me uh, uh, going back on the ground, we need to make sure that our players are, are very exposed and uh, get enough exposure from you know, local events uh, and tournaments. Uh, but other than that, I hope to see every one of you, at least so that will make it to Uganda for the Africa Cup. Uh, hopefully you can have a much better, much better competition this year and exciting tournament. And hopefully people won't be afraid to, to travel. And uh, yeah, so hopefully see you guys in, uh, in Kampala. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, I want now to invite uh, Madame Shuri Neves, if you can unmute yourself. I want to ask you one small question. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to encourage us uh, in that one little uh, question or comment. Cap Verde uh, organized uh, the African beach games. Cap Verde is seen as a very small country in Africa. Uh, as much as we know, there are serious basketballers in Cape Verde. How does a small country like Cape Verde uh, manage to host such big games? Sure. can you increase your volume a bit or get close to the mic? Oh, we can't seem to hear you. Get Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect, loud and clear. Okay, I didn't have, yeah, headphones is better. <laughs> go on, that's good. Well, um, for a small country like Cavite, three and three is perfect. 
uh, because, especially because we are small, we only 500,000 uh, in terms of population. So uh, with the Salt Beach Games, it was a great opportunity for us to show that we can actually do a lot with three on three. Uh, it allowed us to, to get an official court and you know, we worked very closely with the, you know, with the, with the organizers, with the Olympic uh, Committee, the Olympic Committee to make sure that we got what we needed. And it put a lot of, uh, a lot of players in, in highlight mode. For instance, be, because of, what, of the three on three, we had one of the, the young players, we had US colleges looking at him um, because uh, they wanted, uh, they got the opportunity to see him play in a three on three at Salby Games. So what three on three can do uh, for, for, I think for Africa countries and especially uh, smaller countries is not only to allow players in, in the country to promote themselves, but it also allows um, the younger players who are under 18 to show their, um, their talent and be able to use that talent to, to get their education, which is a big part of our plan when it comes down to, to sports. Uh, to and what we want to do here in Cavite is because we're made up of 10 small islands, uh, nine are, are inhabited islands. And the idea is to get every island to take ownership over three on three so that they can promote at the island level. And this would allow us to promote at the national level and, and be able to get more secure players. So our biggest challenge here is, be able, is mobility, is be able to, to get from one island to the next. It can be really expensive in terms of airplanes uh, costs. And some, uh, we have two islands that you can only get to them by, by ferry. So all of those things we have to take in consideration. Like we do not have ground transportation like most African countries can actually manage to do that to promote their game beyond their, their, their territories. So even within Kavir, uh, the challenge of going from one island to the next is always present. But we do believe that three on three is by far the, the best method for us to, to develop and promote the, the basketball game and actually be head to head with soccer, which dominates in Kavir. <laughs> so we wanna make sure that, um, that uh, three on three allows us to, to do that. So as a three on three coordinator, um, I've been looking a lot at, at, at the alternatives to do that. So because we also have associations in different islands as a way to promote, as a way to engage and organize um, uh, our games, our seasons, uh, that another way is to is to encourage all the regional associations that have their own three on three coordinators, and a big part of what I tell a lot of because Cavite's official language is Portuguese, and our mother tongue, what we speak every day, is Cabo Verdean Creole. So a lot of Cavitians do not do not speak English fluently. I was raised in Boston, that's why I, I I have this advantage of being able to communicate so much with people because I speak English, you know, very well. But what I'm trying to get others to understand is the importance of learning English so that they can engage more with basketball because the official language or the language of basketball is English. So where a big piece of what we do has to be linked to education uh, so that we can engage more people and also be able to get government and other entities who sees the importance of education with sports. Uh, so three on three is definitely for a small country like Avet, one of the best ways that we can push the game so that we can eventually, obviously, uh, make the five on five greater than than um, than where we at right now. We have a lot to grow, but um, I, I absolutely love three on three. So, looking forward to what it can do for Kavit. Can he? Ambrose, you are mute. Ambrose, <laughs> his turn. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, thank you so much for uh, that contribution. You are doing an amazing job uh, do, uh, with three on three in Cape Verde amidst the challenges that you have as an island and also the language barriers. Yes. So uh, just to encourage everybody, if Cape Verde can do it, everyone can do it, right? Okay, right. so let's, uh, let's jump on it. Let's jump on this opportunity. And also I want to take your last point where you have highlighted how you have been able to link basketball with education in the country, which is very, very important. We have to make sports, in this case, three on three basketball, relevant to the uh, other needs of a human being in our countries. Uh, we are in very, very tough times. And of course, you know that most countries are going to scale down to the basic human needs, you know, of, of food, health, life, 
uh, and education and such like. So we must link three on three to those basic human needs and we do projects around that, then we'll be able to attract funding. Now we have Robert uh, next to give us our con uh, his uh, concluding remarks. And thereafter, we've been more than privileged to uh, have Dr. Bile allowed to give a word or two. Uh, so Robert is going to talk. And after I will invite Dr. Bile uh, to just say a word of encouragement to us. Uh, and later on, we'll try to conclude this meeting. So Robert, please, you're welcome. Thanks, Ambrose. Um, especially in the current situation, I mean, there's always two sides to a story and to a medal. And I think um, the current situation also provides an opportunity for us um, and to not see everything dark only. Um, the advantages that we have now, basically worldwide, everything is on hold, which also gives regions that are maybe not as well developed until now to catch up a bit, to prepare. Um, for the next big run, because the advantage of VH3 is that we basically work on a 12 month cycle. So it is uh, possible within a short amount of time to reach a lot. So um, this being said, um, what I want to encourage everybody right now is the time to prepare to, to be ready when things get restarted, because VH3 is an opportunity, um, especially in that regard. Um, we are aware of the difficulties um, regarding facilities, resources, um, transportation, which Swirly mentioned, uh, and um, the similar struggles. But 3x3 um, has lower demands than 5 and 5 It might be a perfect opportunity to restart our game. And for some federations even to focus on that and to push 3x3 as the main discipline and as the discipline to become successful. We only need to move four players per team. We don't have to move 12 players. We need only a half court. Um, we, we can have temporary venues. We can have established venues. Um, when traveling, it is cheaper. So um, this all provides an opportunity. And right now, what I want to encourage people is getting back to something that I mentioned before, um, the, um, the clustering. I think, especially when getting started, um, it is easier to work together on a national level between the Federation and the promoters on the international level between promoters and other promoters or between national federations and to join forces and go for, for combined activities. And then once those are connected to the international stage, um, something that we're currently struggling, but where I strongly believe that if we join forces, we can do it. Once we connect those combined activities, then it could be the way or the time to step out individually and try to establish something in your own country, which is connected directly to the world stage. But I would encourage everybody to work together on the national level between promoters and national federations and national Olympic committees, on the international levels between all the national federations and the promoters and cluster things and get out of those clusters to the international stage. Thank you, Robert. I can see so many raised hands, but unfortunately, we might not take as many uh, questions. Why? Because this was a very broad um, uh, discussion. It was a discussion not centralized on one item. So we had a lot of material to cover in the very short time that we do have. But I can promise you one thing that we are going to organize more platforms like this during this time where we'll, ha we'll try to uh, tackle specific, specific topics so that we have enough time of interaction uh, and questions and answers from all the participants. So my sincere apologies. I see Victor Muzadi. I see John Cap Caputa with their hands raised. Guys, we love you. Uh, please keep those questions for the next time. Uh, I see OP, OPP or everybody there wanting to be a part uh, of the question and answer, but we're going to do that next time. Right now, allow me without wasting much more time to welcome uh, a very, very special, very, very special guest, uh, who is Dr. Alphonse Bile. Dr. Alphonse Bile, in many ways, is the face of, Af of Africa basketball, uh, and he's been a source of encouragement for some of us to keep on moving and promoting basketball on the continent. Uh, if um, uh, you may come and, address, and, and mute yourself, which you have done, and please address us, Doctor. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank, first of all, thank you for all of you. Uh, I'm very, very 
satisfied because I think that is the first, uh, what can I say, the first meeting. And Ambrose, I hope that uh, you will meet uh, more meeting from like this. And uh, thank you to Mustafa. Thank you. Uh, thank you to uh, Mr. Robert. Uh, I don't want to say anything because what I have to say is what you said at the end. Uh, first of all, I think that there is too much, too many, too many names of this competition. Uh, Cup, Challenger, all of these. Please, could you uh, could you simplify this for us? Second point, I think that, you know, it's very, very interesting that the first thing we have to do is like uh, Cap Verde. It's, it's internal uh, development. And what you are doing by email, by uh, e-learning or all of this is very, very interesting. You have to go, go on, push this for coaching, for referees, for all of this, push, push, push. Because the, in the internal, if we are very strong in internal, now we can look in the international uh, aspect. FIBA Africa is trying to help what we can do. Every year we give a court, we give balls, we give a, a clocks or something like that. It's not enough. The problem is the federation inside, as Ambrose said at the beginning, you need to have one guy uh, from, uh, from the tree and tree. And after that, you can develop. For me, I believe that we used to play tree and tree in Africa everywhere. The problem is to go in the uh, FIBA rules. And slowly we will go in this rule. So what I want to say is Ambrose, thank you for what you are doing. Keep on doing it. Next meeting, I hope uh, you can uh, schedule it now in the next meeting. So it will be very interesting to go in details to how we can help federation and promoters to develop inside the country this competition. Thank you. Thank you very much for all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bile. You will always appreciate uh, your passion and your uh, relentless efforts towards growing the game of basketball in Africa. All, all the notes and points are taken for me and Robert and whoever is working on three on three and the encouragement that you give us. Uh, uh, this uh, Three on three is still in the younger stages. Uh, we need to do much more work. We need to organize ourselves more. This talk uh, has been brought to you by CRM and our organizer, Mustafa uh, Sar. This is a clear example of what we can achieve if we work with promoters. If when I received a call, a call from Mustafa, I said, no, we cannot do this as uh, the three on three family in Africa, then we would have lost this opportunity. So let's be, uh, let's work together. I want to thank Mustafa and his entire colleagues at his uh, company for, uh, you know, Africa talks. We are going to continue talking. Uh, the topic has been best strategies to adopt for development of three on three basketball in Africa and we'll have more targeted or more uh, specific discussions in the coming coming month. We'll inform all of you. We have put you in our databases. We'll be able to reach you and inform you on when uh, we'll be having the next event. Uh, before I give my closing remark, I want to invite Mustafa to say one word of thank you to all the, uh, to the panelists and also to all the members that uh, participated on this platform. Mustafa, you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Amrus. So I would like to warmly thank all the, the, the speakers and participants to be part of our first English web conferences, uh, Africa Talk Sports, uh, particularly um, Amrus, the moderator, Rehab, Nick, Adrian, and Robert, and uh, Swelly, and uh, uh, the, all the other participants. So by sharing your experiences and knowledge, and this has made this web conference a success that has again surprised our expectation. And thanks again to Amrose, like he say, if he, if he say to, to me when I, when I called him to tell him about this uh, uh, innovation or initiative, like he, like if you say no, this won't be happen. So we need to work together, be together, and uh, the three and three is our game, like like Ambrose said. So may God protect you and your respective family from the COVID-19. So thank you very much and see you soon uh, for our next uh, conferences. Thank you very much, Ambrose.
Thank you, Mustafa, and thank you for all the efforts to technically making sure this is possible, and uh, we'll keep working together to do much more. Uh, and I want to uh, thank uh, from my own self to all the uh, participants and the panelists that we had today, a special thank you from me, all the heads of the Federation that I see here, all the regional coordinators that we, uh, uh, zonal uh, coordinators that we have on this platform, uh, to the speakers, and uh, above, uh, you know, all to uh, everyone who wishes three on three well, especially Dr. Billy and uh, your team uh, and Robert and Sanchez and team. Let's continue working. Let's continue uh, pushing three on three. As I said earlier, I'm totally convinced that this COVID time that we are in can be an opportunity for us for three on three. Many countries are going to struggle to, to kickstart five on five, especially in Africa. I know in Europe and America, the big leagues are, 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 have so much financial backing that is going to help them kickstart basketball using those leagues. But for us in Africa, it is going to be easier to kickstart our basketball once again with three on three. Why? Because it needs minimal investment. But for this to happen, all the people involved in three on three must prepare now, not after not after the lockdown. Must learn; those who have to learn must build structures right now, so that when we uh, we are free in our different countries uh, to kickstart uh, sports, then we can do as many events as we can. We can market three on three, and before you know it, it will help even kickstart five on five in those countries. So, thank you once again. Thank you for participating uh, in, in this uh, e-conference. Uh, we'll see you the next time. Thank you. Bye.